This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham and I am so pleased to finally have somebody in the studio with me. I've got Kim McCann. You're the Senior Public Health Inspector with the Leeds, Grenville and Lanark District Health Unit. Thank you very much for joining us today oh. and being our first guest and my goodness, before COVID, I believe. Yeah, I don't it's, think it's nice to be back in person for sure. Excellent, excellent. So we are going to talk today about well water and septic health. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is such a, it's a lot of work. It it's is. a lot of work when you're a homeowner or, yes. uh, you know, I work in, in support homes that, with yeah. community living. We've got uh, uh, wells at our houses too. So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot to think about and making sure that you, you know, you have a good well supply, good drinking water supply, making sure that you, you know, you're keeping your septic healthy and well maintained. So you're right. It is a lot of work. So the health unit is, is involved a lot because you do a lot of water testing. We do, so, and we actually provide a free service to um, people uh, who own wells. Um, they can come to our health unit and pick up a health unit, uh, pick up a water bottle, they can take a water sample and they can submit it to the public health lab um, for well water testing and it's a free service. So, so we really encourage everyone to, to sample their well on a regular basis. Okay, okay. Now why is spring a good time to check your well water? Well, as you know, we have had a load of rain just even in the last couple of weeks and ever since the snow started to melt. So that's a lot of surface water infiltrating the ground. And when that happens and when things become, when the ground becomes oversaturated, it may not necessarily filter out like it would during normal, normal times. So there is an opportunity that uh, that surface water, the rainwater could be contaminating our wells. So our wells. So we want to make sure that we do test right now to make sure that our wells are staying stable and free of bacteria. Now, there's a lot of chemistry and, and uh, physics going on under the ground <laughs> yeah, for that's sure. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, kind of going back to our grade nine or grade 10 um, science class, you know, as the, as the water is fil filtering down through the soil, it removes bacteria naturally. But if their grounds become saturated, then that doesn't necessarily happen the way it should. Right, right, right. Now, now so what are some of the common household products that people should avoid disposing into their septic yeah, systems? Yeah, so we want to make sure that we're treating our septic systems well. Um, so you want to avoid putting chemicals down. So, you know, sometimes people may change their oils or use paint thinners or mm -hmm. use paint. Avoid putting that down into the well uh, or sort of down into your septic system because it could actually clog up your septic system. Also things like baby wipes or wads of paper towel or um, sanitary products, all of those things can clog up, up a septic system as well, clog up your pipes and could cause your um, septic to backflow into your house, which is very messy and not pleasant to clean up, as you know. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, sometimes you need a plumber to help you get that out, but if it gets out to your septic system, it's well, a whole different problem. Well, that's it, right? And it can cause big clogs in the septic tank and cause the septic tank to malfunction. So, and you know, even simple things like coffee grounds or eggshells, um, even those finer particles, you want to avoid putting those down also because they can actually get out into the bed and clog up the, the aeration that's happening in the bed and cause the septic system to fail. And one of the biggest things when living in the country is you want to make sure that you're not putting too much water down into your septic system all at one time because you don't want to oversaturate that, uh, that bed, which also could cause it to fail. So if you have leaking plumbing, get it fixed straight away, especially a running toilet. Oftentimes that, that will happen and we're not even, you know, we don't even realize that it's happening until hours later. Um, or leaking faucets, you want to get those you know, fixed up right away. Um, even things like doing your laundry. If you're out in the country and on a septic system, you don't want to hold your laundry for one day. You want to spread it out over the week just to minimize putting too much water down into the septic all at one time. Okay, okay. Now, when you, you, you'd mentioned the coffee grounds and, and eggshells, I'm assuming people don't flush those down their toilet. Is that like a garbage disposal yeah, or well, are people doing that? Down the sink, down the kitchen oh, sink, you know, if yeah. you know, you're cleaning out your, your coffee, um, uh, what do you call those things that you might put your percolate, you know, the, oh, the, the, the basket for yes. your mm -hmm. coffee percolator. Um, oftentimes, if you're rinsing them out, you want to make sure that you 
dump the majority of it into the garbage first. And once again, it's like the toilet too. It may clog up and you may need a plumber, but if it yeah. gets out there, yeah, that's it's a right. whole different issue. Oh yeah. my goodness, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So what other things can affect the health of your sewage system? So things like driving motorized vehicles over, over your tile bed. Um, we've even heard stories where, you know, large trucks or even just pickup trucks have run over somebody's septic bed and broken through. Um, even things like too, man, too much snowmobile action um, on a septic tank, or sorry, on a septic system, like on the actual leaching bed, can cause compaction on the, on the bed and potentially cause it to fail over time. So, so you do want to make sure that you keep right. your, your actual bed, make sure it's covered in grass and that it's you know, in a nice sunny area where it can get lots of air so that it's oxygenating properly. And the one thing you don't want to do is plant a tree or a shrub around the septic because of course you know they have roots and as the roots are growing they go towards water which you know if they're going to your bed can can lift the pipes out of your out of your septic system and cause a problem too so you want to avoid that as well oh that's yeah very mindful of mm -hmm. that sort of thing too so how often should you have your septic system inspected we recommend that you have it done every three to five years. So, you know, if, if you have heavier usage, you may want to go the three years. If it's just one or two people living in the house, you could probably get away with five years. But it is important to remember that those septic tanks do contain hazardous gases. So it's, it's best to have a professional company mm -hmm. come in. They can take a look at it, make sure the baffles are still in good shape. They can pump it out for you and help keep your system working properly. So when somebody comes to pump the system, they're also inspecting it as well? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's exactly right, yep. Oh, excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's so much things to learn when you, you, know, you, you, just, you decide to live out in the country yeah. and, yeah, and do that right. sort of stuff. Now, yeah. water samples, how often should you be doing water samples and well, taking them to health unit? We would recommend at least three times a year. Three times a year. Um, the spring is a great time because it's you know, typically when we get more rain and more snow melt, so there's a lot of groundwater going into the ground. In the, in the drought of the summer, so usually in August it's very dry, um, that too can cause problems. Um, sometimes when it's very, very dry and we're in drought-like conditions, your, your well water, like we still need the source of water, so the actual groundwater may be lower. So it may be drawing from other aquifers that it doesn't normally um, actually draw from. So there's an opportunity for contamination there. Um, and then again in the fall, just to make sure things are, are working well. So three times a year as a minimum, again, it's a free service offered through the health unit. So we encourage all well owners to do that. If for some reason we were to get a really significant rain fall or uh, uh, maybe a, a big snow melt, like a winter snow melt, something like that, we you know, do, it, do it then as well. So like I said, it's a free service. You can do it as right. often as you'd like. And it's for your safety. Exactly. Absolutely. So you you get an adverse effect uh, a, a, a test back. What yep. what would happen? So if you did get an adverse water back or you know counts of bacteria in your water, give us a call at the health unit and we'll walk you through correcting the process. Um, oftentimes, if you've had a good well history, then disinfecting the well will work will work very well. If you know if it's an ongoing problem, then you may want to look at putting on a treatment system to kill whatever bacteria may be in, in the actual well water so that it's safe for you to drink. Absolutely. Oh, so, and when we talk about uh, getting your septic system pumped, uh, do you have uh, recommendations of who to call or how to do it? Yeah, do we that? actually, on our website, we actually have a list of um, local pumpers um, in the area that could do that. So. Yeah, there's there's actually quite a few around. So there good. is, yes, for sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's better to get it checked before than after when you have a problem. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, yes for Definitely. sure. Well, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? No, I don't think so. I think we've uh, covered it fairly well. So. Well, I hope we do this on a regular basis because yes. we're just talking today about well water and septic health, and you do so much more as well, too. Yes, we do. And uh, we're, we're getting through the pandemic and COVID, so it's it's nice to have you here and talk about something different. Yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> so Kim McCann, thank you very much for joining us, Senior Public Health Inspector with the Leeds, Grenville, and Lanark District Health Unit. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Take care.